Hi guys and welcome back to the FPL duo. We're back for the knee jerk stream where we react to game week 30 and we also look ahead to, you know, game week 31 as well. Well, your Premier League football is back and wow, what a week or what a weekend of football, we should say. Um, yeah, really enjoyed the, the break, obviously the Easter Easter break. Hopefully everyone's had a good weekend as well in terms of the football. Uh, yeah, how are you doing uh, today, Jordan? You all right? Yeah, very good, thanks. This game week has been quite exciting from the very moment the game week kicked off. It was it was a great match uh, for the early kickoff, but it wasn't as much as hoped for for the last obviously match of the game week, which was a bit of a bit of a stand a stalemate type match. Mm. Yeah, obviously, sorry guys for the later stream than usual. Um, we just had to do it a bit later due to commitments. Um, but yeah, uh, let's kick it off with my team. Let's you know recap game week thirty and, and what week it's been. Um, so in goal, I've got uh, Dubravka, and for those who didn't watch that early kickoff on Saturday, um, what a mad game that was! You know, Newcastle in the end winning it four three after West Ham going three one up and just capitulating. Really, that's fair to say. And yeah, yeah I mean, big win for Newcastle. Um, but Dubravka did concede. Um, you know, three goals in that game comes with a one pointer, and he was actually outscored by Ariola, as you can see on my bench. So, yeah, one pointer for Dubravka. Um, Zabani, uh, this one was frustrating because Zabani looked like he was going to keep a clean sheet in that game against Everton. And I think Everton scored in the 86th, like 86th minute to equalize 1 1 um, at that point, and that was annoying because obviously Zabani lost his clean sheet. Um, because I thought he'd probably get it there, but. Unfortunately, he only comes away with the two points. Obviously, Everton scoring late on. Um, Gabriel, on the other hand, um, also we know Arsenal and Man City, big game, biggest game probably of this weekend. Um, again, that was a just a quiet game in terms of attacks. There wasn't many chances created from either team. It's quite a KG game. No, no team really wanted to go for it, I felt like. And obviously, Arsenal come away with a clean sheet as well as Man City. So, Gabriel does pay off keeping him in the team six pointer um so yeah it was good that you know i, I decided to play him uh, even though he had a tough fixture and I, I didn't think he would keep a clean sheet because obviously i expected a draw um but i thought you know, maybe one one or something like that but yeah nil nil um pedro porro uh, annoyingly loses a clean sheet within the first like couple of minutes of the game starting against luton um and we we did say spurs they don't keep many clean sheets. I mean, Poro is in a lot of our teams because of his attacking threat rather than clean sheets. So, sort of expected. I was hoping that he can get a clean sheet, but it wasn't to be. Uh, Spurs did win it late on um, with the Son winner, uh, I think in the 86th minute. Um, so, yeah, Spurs did end up getting a win and, and getting the job done. Moving into the midfield five, let's start off with the Spurs guys. Um, so, Madison, unfortunately, was subbed off after like 70 minutes, I think. Um, he was playing pretty well up until that point, so I was surprised that he was subbed off. Um, but he comes over the blank. Um, on the other hand, though, Son, uh, my captain, he did sort of it looked like at one point he wasn't going to score. Um, he could have had a lot more goals, to be fair. I think, um, he should have probably had at least you know, at least another one goal, hit the post, could have had a hat trick quite easily. Um, so. Yeah, it was a bit frustrating. They only got the one uh, one goal, I should say, but he did get the three bonus points as well, which was nice. Um, so I'll take that. Um, and I, I, you know, he went from like five points, wherever he was on four points, up to twenty after the after the bonus points since things kicked in. So yeah, lovely to see Son get the twenty point out as my captain. And obviously, I was fifty fifty on Salah or Son. I switched to Son last minute. Glad I did because obviously Son did outscore Salah. Um, moving on to Salah though, again, another player that should have probably had a hat-trick today. I think non-owners, very lucky to get away with Salah only getting one goal. Um, Salah actually had 12 shots in that match today, which is his highest ever recorded in a Premier League game for Liverpool. Um, I don't know how he didn't score at least another two more. Uh, a couple of times he was a bit greedy as well, should have passed to Darwin, maybe getting an assist. He had a one-on-one, -on -one. he just literally rolled it to the keeper. I don't know what he was doing. Any more power in that shot, he probably goes in. So, yeah, so I think Salah non-owner is probably getting away with one because um, that could have easily been a lot more goals for Salah. But he's got Sheffield next. I think he's going to be captaincy, prime captaincy pick that week. 
um, or in midweek, I should say. So, yeah, Salah comes with a one goal in Liverpool's 2-1 win against Brighton. And obviously, with the fixes that came after Liverpool are now, obviously, as well, top of the league. Um, to complete it, in terms of the midfield as well, Douglas Luiz um, got a clean sheet point after Aston Villa's 2-0 win. Um, was it against Wolves? So, again, decent yeah. win. Uh, not much, really, from Douglas Luiz, but he'll be coming at my team anyway on the wild card. And then to finish it off, Palmer comes away with a big one, um, getting two goals, 15-pointer. Um, obviously, the first one, very dubious. I don't think it was a penalty. I think Chelsea were quite fortunate awarding that penalty for the first one. But the second goal from Palmer was a lovely finish into the bottom corner. And, yeah, Chelsea just do what they do, and then they just find new ways to self-implode. You know, Burnley go down to 10 men, which I thought was harsh. I didn't think it was a, a second yellow. And then, obviously, they equalised straight after the 1-1. And Chelsea go and win 2-1. And then, obviously, Burnley come back. So, yeah, it's, it's frustrating for a Chelsea fan, I guess. I mean, the Chelsea really should have won that game. They had another couple of chances as well, but they missed. So, But, yeah, in terms of FPL, Palmer coming away with two goals. Can't really complain too much. You know, he's been consistent. And, um, yeah, comes with a 15-pointer as well with the, with the bonus points. Then up front, um, not much to shout about. Um, I mean, Tony actually, again, another player that could have had a, maybe at least another goal, may, maybe even three. Um, well, Man United, <laughs> yeah, Man United were very, very lucky in that game that it was only 1-1. One, one. Um, even Man United were going to win at one point. Man United were, took the lead in the 94th minute or something. And that would have been the biggest robbery in Premier League history, I think, if, that, if it ended 1-0. Because the way Brentford were playing, absolutely all over Man United, peppering them. Um, and I just couldn't believe it uh, watching that game. Like they, they were going to lose, but justice was sort of served. Um, Brentford did get the late goal that they deserved. Um, Tony cutting it back and then for the assist. Again, Tony should have had a, a couple of other goals, I believe. Uh, it could have paid off massively. And obviously, he's very low owned. So, yeah, it's a bit annoying, but yeah, five point, I'll take it. And then Watkins, again, comes off injured uh, at half time, which was quite annoying i think for those that took watkins out on the wild card the gaming 30 wild card is obviously that's a big paid off massively um watkins coming off injured at half time but i don't know how serious it is is he going to be fit for 31 I'm not sure but even if he is i, I believe he's coming out my team anyway so uh, we'll have to see with watkins in that regard um in the bench not much to say not a lot of blanks Ariola, morris doughty and taylor all blanking um but all in all no, I was 50-50, do I wild card or not? I think I made the right decision not to wild card because I still got a green arrow. It wasn't a massive green arrow, but it was still a you know, fairly decent sized green arrow. So happy with the points I've got as well. 64 points total, all out. Um, it's a green arrow. Still got the wild card, bench boost and the free hit left to play. So I'm hoping that I could make a move into the top 100k next. I am going to be wild carding in 31. I'm like 90% sure. Um, but we'll have to see later on in this video what my plans are for the wild card but yeah 64 all out up to 127k um same again jordan for yourself talk us through how your game week 30 has gone yeah it was a bit of a, a bit of a weird one before i go through my team obviously i'll just recap because i wasn't here for deadline stream i did take a minus four uh and that was for salvo munez and i took gross and Solanke out of my team so just so you guys are up to date with the team uh, so far for game week 30. But well, without further ado, let's start off with the goalkeeper. So Leno, that game against Sheffield United was very interesting. That ends up in a 3-3 draw. And at one point, I thought Sheffield United were actually going to win that game against Fulham. I was quite surprised. They were in the lead. And then last minute goal, I think for Munez, equaliser, a very important one, uh, got them that draw. But regardless, Leno only got the one point. At one stage, I thought he was going to get a red card and sent off, but luckily it, it didn't come to that. So, yeah, I'm just thankful he got uh, a positive in terms of points for that game. Uh, moving on to defence, so Doughty, uh, I think he came off injured late stages of that second half, but Luton did concede uh, two goals uh, to Spurs and ended up losing that game. They scored pretty early, as we mentioned, but no clean sheet for him. and. Whether he's fit or not, that's a that's a worry, I think, for a 
a lot of us because there is a lot of injuries happened through this game week. Uh, Brantford as well, no clean sheet for him against Bournemouth. They scored two against them. And Audi News Brantford with one uh, point. I think at one stage he was um, injured, but I'm not sure whether he... I think he did stay on and played 90 minutes, but it was at some stage. It looked like he was going to come off as well. And finally, Gabriel, like we mentioned, he got his clean sheet against that 0-0 uh, against Man City. As a neutral fan to that game, I thought that was pretty uh, shocking in terms of results. I was expecting a, a win from either side, especially for that title race. But regardless, uh, I wouldn't say Gabriel's still flagged because obviously he did play, so he should be fine for game 31. But it was nice for him to get me the only clean sheet in my back four. Uh, so moving on to the midfield for uh, so Foden, he was silenced in that game, obviously no goals and only got the clean sheet point, leaving him with three points. Not really much, I'll say, involvement from him or really anyone in that Man City team. I thought it was pretty stale and most of the action was in the middle, even though Man City held most of possession in that game. Uh, moving on to Salah, who was my transfer in. Now, considering he did score, uh, it did set my rank back which was quite interesting because I never thought he would be that highly captained or even that highly... Well, I know he was highly transferred in, but I didn't think by that many around my rank that he'd sent me back, uh, obviously, into the red. So, yeah, him scoring didn't really make a, a positive impact in my team, but he was rewarded with the seven points for the goal he scored uh, during that game. Obviously, he, sh he should have had much more, but I'm kind of glad he didn't have uh, more goals in that game. And moving on to my captain for this week. So I chose the right captain, Palmer. He did score his two goals, one from penalty and one from open play, and was rewarded with the bonus free uh, as well. And yeah, he was the... I had my gut feeling going with Palmer, and it did pay off. Uh, and he was rewarded with 30 points. So yeah, I'm quite happy with the captaincy pick. I've got it right this week. And finally, we on to Saka, who... Again, nothing really much happened with him. He played about 70 or so minutes in that game, uh, only getting a clean sheet point. Again, he was flagged, but he should be fine for game at 31. Uh, moving on to the front three, Haaland. There was one point where he could have potentially scored. I'm not sure what he did. He sort of went for the ball, but kind of missed it. And his leg went underneath it. It was quite interesting. But yeah, he was... Yeah, again, not really involved in that game, not in the charts he's created for Man City. He ends up on two points. I think a lot of people that obviously don't have Haaland, uh, non-Haaland owners, are quite glad that all the Man City assets uh, did blank in that game. Uh, obviously, apart from the defenders. Uh, but moving on to uh, the Fulham player. He was my other player, transferred in Munez, who scored a late goal in that 3-3 draw, like I mentioned, and was rewarded with the six points. So I was quite happy uh, he did get something out of that game. He could have got two goals. He did hit the post uh, early on in that game. But, yeah, I'm quite glad he got a, a goal. And I'm quite happy to own him for the next few fixtures that Fulham have. They're pretty good. And finally, Watkins, as we mentioned, he went off uh, with a hamstring injury. So we need to find out down the line whether he's going to be fit for the game week as it is fast approaching uh, Tuesday. So... There's not a lot of time for him, uh, depending on how severe his injury is. But he only gets one point for playing uh, the first half of that game. Uh, on the bench, nothing to really talk about. There's mostly flags rather than anything, really. I think Ake is a flag as well, because he did go off injured, uh, I believe, in that game as well. I think he only played half an hour or just under half an hour in that game. Areola as well, he came off the pitch at half time. He struggled through that game. He could even kick a ball. Uh, players on his side had to kick it or he had threw, threw the ball out of uh, <laughs> out of his goalkeeper box. And obviously Bell and Huang are ruled out for injury too. So that is a starting 11 and the bench uh, talked through. And I'm quite surprised I'm actually on the red arrow. I know it's really small. My old rank was 35k. I've now dropped down to 40k rank. But I... Uh, I still can't get over my head how this is a red arrow. I know I took a minus four for it, but considering I chose the right captain for this week and Salah, Son, even Solanke, who I don't own, did kind of put me on the red arrow, but I don't understand how with Palmer getting 30 points this week, I'm still on the red arrow. is uh, It's questionable, but 
I did have a double check of it on live FBO and it seems to somehow add up from that. But yeah, it is a small red arrow for the minus four I took, but I'm quite happy, I think, getting through this week with um, my first hit taken uh, for the season. Okay. Um, so that's that's sort of how our gaming 30 has gone, guys. Let us know how you did in the chat as well below. Also, make sure you are subscribed to the channel as well so you don't miss out any content. Also, make sure you are smashing the like button on the video as well, guys. As you know, it really helps support the channel. So that's pretty much how our Game Week 30 has gone. We're going to talk about Game Week 31, and let's pull up both our teams and show you guys, you know, what the plans are. Just bear with me for a sec. Hopefully you guys can see that a bit better. Let me zoom in. Go. So this is what my bus team currently looks like. So in goal, I've got Dubravka. I've got back three of Poro, Zabani, Gabriel, who is fit to play. He's not flagged. Um, in midfield five, I've got Palmer, Douglas, Luis, Son, Madison, Salah, captain. And then up front, I've got Tony and Watkins. Watkins, again, I'm not sure if he's going to be fit. I mean, there's no news on it at the moment. Like, but he's a tough game against Man City. And he plays on Wednesday. So who knows if he's going to be fit for that game. And then on the bench, I've got Ariola, who is, again, another flag. Probably won't be fit. Morris, Doughty. Um, who they've got Arsenal away, so don't want to be playing them, and then Taylor. So, looking at my team early thoughts, um, I think I am going to wild card. There's a few players that I want to bring in my team that I can't really get to. So, first player, I think you know Haaland. I've gone without him. He's not. He's paid off going without Haaland. I think I took him out before he had Liverpool and Arsenal, and lo and behold, you know he's gone and blanked in both those games, and he was pretty anonymous in both those fixtures. So. It, it, that's definitely paid off, but now I think I'm going to have to start bringing Haaland back in. He's got Villa next. Again, I don't think Villa is the easiest fixture, but I don't think I want to go without him in that game. So I think I'll be bringing him in. Saka is another one. I've gone without Saka for a while um, because of Arsenal's fixtures as well um, against Man City, and I, I sold him. But Saka's got Luton at home next. I'll probably want him for that game, potentially captain worthy as well. Brighton, Villa are tough games, but again, we know Saka's on penalties and, and stuff like that. So he's another one that I'd want to bring in. Um, so yeah, wild card is on the way, I think, with, with this sort of team. Let me know what you guys think in the chat. Would you guys think I should wild card or do you think I should save it for 35 now and um, and do that? But I think right now, um, there's a few players in my in my team that I don't really want, like Zabani, um, Douglas Louise, I don't really want in my team. Um, even Tony Watkins, I want to change up the strike force and the bench, as you can see as well, having Luton, double Luton on the bench is not great either. So, um, I'll have to sort it out. Let's take a few comments though. Um, lads, I'm in a sticky one. Can I, anywhere I can send you my team to give me some advice, need Salah next week. Yeah. Tweet us, um, tweet us at the FPL duo. Um, and I'll be able to see your team on there and you know. I'll be replying to you in a sec. But yeah, tweet us at the FPL Joe, sir. And we'll get that sorted out for you um, and give you our advice. Um, Andrew D, not a great game week for me. Trying not to regret my minus eight for Doughty, Bowen, Morris to Gusto, Salah, Haaland. As have free hit and bench boost left. So feel fairly well set up. 3.5k rank down to 7.5k. I mean, you're Maybe still doing really well. Yeah, it's actually not so bad for minus eight. That could be much worse from where you are mm. at the moment. I mean, that's, that's that's pretty good, even though it's a bit unfortunate for Gusto. Um, but at least Salah, your captain, did score for you. Yeah, obviously Bowen scored as well, though. So, I mean, Bowen had a good game week, I guess. I mean, we did say Bowen was a sell, um, but then he goes and gets a goal, um, which is which is a bit mad, but... I think you're still well set up. I mean, free hit 34, I, I think, for yourself. And then obviously you're looking at bench boost 37, possibly. Uh, Young, Addis, uh, Garnacho, or Sarabia, or McAllister. Um, depends on your strategy. Uh, if you've not got a free hit left in 34, I think Sarabia is decent. 
Sarabi has a double in game 34. I know McAllister does as well, but I wouldn't want to waste a slot on McAllister. I would rather have... Um, if I'm going for Liverpool assets, I'd rather have Salah, you know, Darwin, or even a Trent if he's back by game 34. Um, I think those are the players that you'd want to go for rather than McAllister. I'm just checking our Twitter now. Um... Want to go Odegaard to Salah, but surely keep Odegaard for Luton. No, I'd rather have Salah, personally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would as well. I mean, Salah, in, especially if that was Salah this week, it has cost you seven points, and they could have had much more uh, in that Brighton game. So I think, yeah, we're pretty fortunate for those non-Salah owners that he only managed yeah. to only score one. So I think I'll be definitely bringing Salah in for Sheffield, who he has next. Yeah, I'd be bringing Salah in, um, Kian. I think mean, that's how you say your name. Um, I think Salah is a must be a priority at this point because he also had a double in 34. Um, so uh, again, I think you should be looking to bring Salah in. Got a nice home fixture this week as well against Sheffield. Take a look at Liverpool's fixtures. Sheffield, then Man United, then Palace. A home fixture, Fulham and Everton in a double. And then West Ham, Spurs, Villa and Wolves to end the season. I think Salah might be a season holder, you know, in my opinion. Um, and then obviously you, you can see how he does after the double and, and make your mind up if he's worth keeping. But I think Salah is a priority of bringing in even other Liverpool assets like Darwin could be as well. Um, have Salah and Keller already and no chips. Or no chips. No chips. Yeah, I think I only have the bench boost left. So, with the many flags I have in my team, it's uh, hopefully it's not much of a headache. What's your boss team looking like uh, if you want to pull up your team and then just read us out your 11 and then also your early initial transfer plans? Yeah, one second. And, yeah, here we go. So, here's my game week 31 team and how it looks so in goal i've gone with leno i think i don't have a choice really if area isn't fit for that game against tottenham but i think leno has the better fixture over him uh i've gone with a back three at the moment with doughty who possibly won't be fit either so i might have to do a transfer for him but the rest of defense i've got brantwaite and gabriel um midfield four got foden all right fixture, I think, for him. Salah, who's the current captain, nice fixture. Palmer, again, the main United, the way they played against Brentford, I would say that's a nice fixture for him. And Saka, who's who should be fine for that Luton game. Up front, I've got with three forwards, Haaland, uh, Munez and Watkins. Again, he could not be fit for that Man City game, but I think I would rather have taken him out now because that's going to be a tough game for him. So there is a lot of work to do, I think. You've got eight it? flags on your team, I just realised, because you're bent Aki's flag now as well. Yeah, Aki would be a flag because he went off injured too. So this, this is the you know, this is the problem with uh, other, obviously, international break and those sorts of in-between in issues. It causes a lot of injuries and causes a headache, fancy-wise. But I want to say there's six yellow flag, uh, six flags because the Gabriel and Saka ones aren't really flags. Mm, yeah, so. true. That isn't so bad. It's just Doughty and Watkins, really. And maybe having an extra bench option could be nice as well. But So what? You, you, you're going to have to take a minus four, potentially, to bring out 11 playing players. Because Doughty and Watkins, they may not start. Yeah. yeah, that's the only thing. I might have to take another minus four to have a starting 11. And even though I've taken one already for game week 30, I don't really want to take another one uh, straight away. Mm. But it's looking like it, unless Watkins make it makes a miraculous recovery. And I played against Man City, but I very much doubt it. Unless I see what the press. Well, you don't know yet. To be fair, yeah. it's going to be tough to tell, unless you just do a bench, take Huang out or someone like that, and have a bench. If Watkins doesn't start, you have a bench option to come in for him. Yeah, You've got no bench. Plus, there's also Doughty to think about as well, who has Arsenal away, and I don't think he'll be fit for that. I think it was a push for him to come back to that game at 30 game. Uh, mm. 
so soon after his last injury before that. So, yeah, he's a priority too. So it will be probably a defender transfer I'll make. It will just depend on who I decide to bring in because I'm not really keen on defenders at the moment because there's not many clean sheets really rolling uh, out in the Premier League at the moment. Mm. Okay. I mean, that's going to be interesting to see what you do on Tuesday. So not long left to the no. deadline. Is a Tuesday deadline this week. Um, going back to my team, obviously, as you guys know, I am on a wild card. It looks like I'm going to activate that tonight, actually, because there is some price rises, um, and a lot of price rises. So I want to catch some of them. So I'll probably go early. So what I'm thinking right now, the whole front three is changing. So Watkins, Tony and Morris are going out of the front line. And if I go on forwards, I think Haaland's will be coming in. Uh, Darwin's coming in, Isaac's coming in. So looking at that front line, um, Douglas Lewis will have to go. Madison will probably go. I've got Saka to come in here. Just bear with me for a moment. Saka against Luton, if he's fit, he should be fit. I think Arteta said he's fine. And then I think a cheap midfielder I'm looking at right now is Garnacho. I'm not even sure about because he's. I mean, Man United are just poor, but we know Man United are going to have a double game week in 36 or 37. I believe 37. And I wouldn't mind having another Man United doubler. Um, so Garnacho is a cheap 4.9 million option. That's not locked, though. But the rest of the, the, the team is locked in that regard. Gabriel will stay. Zabani will go. Doughty will go. Poro will probably stay. The goalies will have to probably go as well. Um, I'm thinking the Chelsea goalkeeper, which I'm not even sure about. Because Chelsea are just poor as well. You don't know what you can get with Chelsea. Um, and then in terms of the defence, I was also looking at a Chelsea player. Um, Gosto, but Gosto went off injured. Ain't Nuri, again, I think it's decent. Burnley, West Ham, and then Forest. And then he has a double. And then after that, he's got Luton City. So I'm thinking eight Nuri. Could have. He was unlucky not to score on the weekend as well, I thought, against um, yeah. against Villa. One-on-one yeah, -on -one with the goalie, but just straight at the goalie. So yeah. maybe eight Nuri. Don't know yet. Um, in terms of the other defenders, I don't know who I'd go for. I've got 8.3 million. So probably has to be... I was thinking Lascelles, obviously. But now it might have to be like a Dan Byrne. Yeah, because I think the sales went off injured too. That's, yeah, Lascelles done his ACL. Oof. Um, so Lascelles is out for the rest of the season. Yeah, out of the season now. That injury. Um, in terms of Newcastle defense, I mean the share Burns the cheapest one. Livermore is four point one, but I think I'm going to go with Burn. Um, and in terms of the goalie, I can't really get anyone else. If I go Petrovic. I don't know what other goalie I can... I'll get a cheap goalie. Maybe the Man City goalie, Ortega. Because Ortega's going to play with Edison being out. Got some decent fixtures against Palace, Luton. Don't know. And he's got a double as well to come in the future. I don't know how serious um, Edison's injury is, but it could be serious. So, at least 0.2 in the bank, something like this, possibly. Or I could downgrade Poro to you, Doggy, to make more money if I really need it. So looking at that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine changes from my actual team. And I think that's enough to warrant the wild card. So that's what I'm thinking at the yeah. moment. I think that's pretty good wild card because with your team value, it's hard to fit Sun, Salah and Holland in there because Sun's pretty much premium. So you've, you've pretty much got three premiums in your team. Mm. And if you don't have really a good team value, it's very hard to fit three. So that's... That's a good yeah. advantage. Yeah, I could fit Son, Salah, Saka, Haaland in as well. Plus Darwin and Isaac. 7.5. So this is what I'm probably going to go with. A um, couple of changes, not locked. But either Tuesday deadline, which again makes it interesting. Um, is there anyone else, Jordan, if you're a wild carding, you think you should consider at the moment or? Um, I did mention maybe he has a single game which doesn't have any doubles coming up, but maybe Gordon linked with this that could be really good. Like in that early kickoff game, 
I thought they played really well. I think Gordon, that wing, is pretty pretty decent with obviously Wilson mm. absent. I think him linking up with Isaac is pretty uh, lethal in the attack. So he's probably our recommendation, maybe for Ganacho, even though he has a double. Maybe Gordon's a single game player that could outscore. But the thing is, Gordon, how many he's... games is he out for? He was suspended. I think it's one game week. If I'm not wrong. See, got a yellow card and then he got the yellow card for kicking the ball away. So I think that's one yeah. match ban for that. But let me know in the comments if that's incorrect for the, for those who think Gordon is banned for longer than one match. Mm, yeah, I mean, let's I mean, have a look when he's back. I think he's back on the sixth. So, yeah, he's missing that one yeah. game against Everton and he'll be back for Fulham, then Spurs, then Palace, then Sheffield. Because I won't go with him on a... I mean, Fulham Spurs ain't the easiest. And then after that, it's Sheffield in 35. So I think I'm going to avoid Gordon for now. I think Gordon could be decent after 35, though, because I probably want yeah. him in 35 because he's got Sheffield, Burnley, and then he'll probably have a double with Man United and Brighton in there in 37. Because we know mm. Gordon will double. But yeah, he could be a good option later down the line after his obviously his red card, which was very silly of him. I'm not sure what he was thinking. Yeah, Especially when he was on the yellow to get that. Mm. A lot of price rises as all guys today. I think Darwin's rising, or Isaac's rising, or Son is rising. I think Salah might be rising again. Gabriel. So that's why I want to lock in the early wild card tonight um, to get some of these price rises in and, and benefit from that. Um, but yeah, and then 34 wild card, uh, 34 free hit. Well, I'll probably have triple Liverpool. Um, I'll have triple Arsenal. But I'm going to go different. I might have Odegaard or a Havertz on a free hit just to be different. Um, then, yeah, we'll have to weigh it up. I won't have any Man City on my free hit, I don't think. Who are Man City got in 34? Brighton away. Brighton away. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I will have any C. I I don't think I'm a, I'll have Ireland in my wild card. Or for, sorry, my free hit, sorry. Uh, I'll probably go with that Ireland 34 when he's got Brighton because my captain's going to probably be Salah in 34 when he's got Fulham and Everton. Uh, it could be Saka. Yeah. Who's Saka got in 34? Wolves and Chelsea. So I think those are going to be more popular. Yeah, Salah double game, looks pretty good. Especially for those who still have triple captain available, if you haven't used it yet. There's mm. obviously still a few game, double games coming up for obviously that mm. variety. Also, Spurs still have two more double game weeks coming up in the future. We don't know what weeks, probably 37, 36 maybe. So one thing to consider is also Spurs will have some doubles coming up. Um, Darwin again. Is he going to start against Sheffield? Because obviously he plays 70 minutes, or no, 80 minutes, sorry, today. Then Liverpool play again on Tuesday, but the big one's Man United on Sunday. Um, it's a quick turnaround there. How, how much do you reckon Darwin will play? Do you, you think he'll start against Sheffield? I think so, yeah. Especially now that Liverpool are top of the table with Arsenal Man City drawing. I think Klopp will just give it. Get him strong, get the strong squad out every game now till the mm. end of the season. I mean, injuries are going to pop up regardless, I think, whether he rests that player or this player. So, yeah, I'll just, if I was caught now, I'd probably play him for all the fixtures there. And if they're winning by three or four nil, just take Darwin off. Yeah. But it's comfortable. Yeah, looking at the fixtures, obviously, Sheffield should be a win there. Man United's going to be tough, we know. Even though how bad Man United are, they will turn up against Liverpool, I think. Palace, Fulham, Everton, West Ham. I mean, you consider that too. I don't know, Man City's fixtures. It's a lot more. You no, know, a lot more um, green, more greens on paper. But Man City do have Spurs to play in double. That's probably going to be 37, right? As well. So yeah, if you still got chip left could be a Fulham Spurs double game 37 for Man City or even a 36 depending on the way the fixes fall but I think City's fixes look pretty good again after they after drawing to Liverpool drawing to Arsenal tough games out of the way 
Villa at home next. And it should be a win for City here, especially with no Watkins. Potentially. Palace, Luton, Brighton, Forest. These are some nice games there for City. Wolves, Fulham, West Ham. Mm, yeah. Spurs. I thought, even though Watkins did come off injured and then they played without him in second, I thought Aston Villa played really well still without him mm. up front. They've quite yeah. linked up nicely, the youngsters. And just to compare that to Arsenal's fixtures, Luton should win that on Wednesday. Brighton away, Villa at home, Wolves away, Chelsea at home, Spurs, Bournemouth, Man Union, Everton. That's probably the toughest run out of the, out of three teams. Yeah, and now they have to hope that Liverpool drop in between those games because if Liverpool go on to win all theirs, and Man City, mm. Arsenal do, it won't matter much for the title because Liverpool will be ahead on obviously the points because of the results today. Yeah, I think there will be more twists and turns. I still think there's going to be a lot more drop points. I don't think a team is going to win mm. eight or nine in a row. I'll be surprised, but we'll we'll have to see. Um, after looking at my team on Twitter, would you say Odegaard is a better sell? Then Foden and Son. Foden has a quick run of games with potential to be rested and Odegaard's fixture just looks really good. Yeah, I'd rather sell Foden than Odegaard, probably. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'd probably say yeah, it is true. Foden does have more fixtures and there is that potential to be rested. He did come off as well today's game. I think mm. for... Who did he come on for? Or for? I think it was... Really Doku. Yeah, I said Jeremy. Yeah, I think it was Doku he came off for. So, yeah, his minutes could be at risk because he only played sixty today. But that does make sense. Only God will probably play ninety. Yeah. Uh, so he'll play more minutes over Foden. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, guys, let us know your questions in the chat. Also, make sure you are hitting that like button as well. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel as always. Um. But yeah, I'm excited now for the last eight weeks of the season because I've got. The wild card to play, and I think this could be a, a good, a good one, a good time to play it. And it's mad though, because if I played it this week, I would have had Gusto in there, who who got injured, things like that. So it could all yeah. change the injuries. Yeah, especially after a break as well. That international break has sort of turned and mixed up with the injuries that have happened in Game yeah. Thirty, which could change obviously strategies as well because players we want players we do have in our teams might have to come out or bring in so yeah def- definitely for me I have to think about carefully. yeah how would you how would you feel with having just the one chip left or is it just a bench boost which probably is the weaker chip of all the bench or yeah. of all the chips how do you I, feel confident to navigate it the last eight game weeks i mean i will find a way to navigate it. it's just whether it's um in the right direction because I feel like it is going to be a few reds uh, in the next few game weeks until I get rid of the flags and issues in my team. I kind of wish I had my wild card, my second one, but I was forced into using it uh, mm. earlier down the line because of flags, <laughs> ironically, similar like now at the moment. So, yeah, I kind of wish I had my wild, my second wild card now so I can yeah. navigate around it. No, fair enough. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting because a lot of managers have got their wild card left still um some are going to use it this week if you're not using it this week then i think majority of the managers will use it in 35 which again makes sense if you don't have a free hit if you've got a free hit then i think going now is, is a good idea um obviously the chip strategy is it was all dependent because 34 is we know there's a big double and then after that there's a there's another double in 37 as well uh, I don't think it's worth going for a Newcastle defender if you look at their double gaming 37 fixtures. Rather, back the clean sheet with Bradley against Sheffield. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I will say about Bradley, looking up Liverpool's fixtures, Trent will be back for that Palace game. He should start against Palace. Man United, I, I think, might come too soon for Trent. But if you include Bradley on a wild card, Problem is, you'll probably get two games out of him. You probably will get a clean sheet against Sheffield. Man United, we don't know. If Liverpool will keep a clean sheet. Maybe not likely. Um, after that, I have got a free hit, so I'm not worried about gaming 34 because I can get who I want in. If, if Trent's fit, I'll get Trent in. Then in 35, 36, 37, 38, 
you know, I'll have to transfer Bradley out because, I mean, I'm assuming Bradley isn't going to start, but Bradley's been so good. Again, another really good performance today. Um, struggled near the start a bit. They were going down his side, but later second half, I thought he sort of grew into it, Bradley. Yeah, there was moments in that where he could have scored even. He had a nice chance. Unfortunately, yeah. it was went over the goal, but he does have attack and threat as well. Um, and that maybe that Sheffield United one, he could potentially get balled in the clean sheet. Yeah, that Sheffield United game could be a big one. And if you've not got Liverpool assets, I think having double, triple Liverpool could pay off. As well on the wild card, I'm planning on bringing in Darwin. I'm hoping he starts uh, as, as well as Salah. And if you do have triple Liverpool, then I think you could also go big because I do expect Liverpool to to win quite comfortably against Sheffield. I know Liverpool wasn't completely at their races today. I think Liverpool were great today, but if Salah had his shooting boots on, he could have had a hat trick. So that just shows. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, what 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 do you reckon for? I mean, let let me pull up game week thirty one fixtures. I think as well, just after an international break, a lot of people are, a lot of players are lethargic and not really up to their form as well. So mm. we have to consider that. Um, Newcastle, Everton, again on Tuesday, I think. No, Gordon. I'm, I'm probably going to have Isaac for that game. Hopefully Isaac can do the business. Obviously getting two penalties. For those that went on a yeah. wildcard 30, what was nice, I guess, having him for a 15-pointer. Um, not in a Forest Fulham. Don't know what you're going to get out of that game. You know, Fulham got Moniz, who scored a nice goal uh, this weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah, he could do it again. Decent fixture mm. for him. Yeah, or, I think. Yep, go. I think I think also Chris Wood and Gibbs White, again, could be nice mm. players to have against them. That could be a high-scoring game between the two. They both concede a lot of goals. Yeah, obviously Fulham, that was a surprise. You know, they almost lost that after beating Spurs. <laughs> yeah. Almost losing to Sheffield, which was a bit mad, but as you show, the Premier League is a bit of a mad league at, at, at times. Uh, Bournemouth Palace again, I think Solanke is a decent pick if you've still got Solanke. Uh, you could score again. I mean, he scored again this week, could score again against Palace, doing really well. Solanke this season so far. Um, Burnley Wolves, I mean, Ike Nuri is someone I may consider on a wild card. There's no one else really outside of that I'd want, especially no Burnley players. West Ham Spurs is interesting. I'm probably going to have Son. Uh, I'll probably have Poro or Udogi. West Ham just throwing away a 3-1 lead. I mean, what do you think of that sort of game, West Ham Spurs? Because I'm expecting an entertaining game again. Yeah, that's probably one of the best late kickoffs I've probably seen in the Premier League in a while. But yeah, I mean, that 3-1 turnaround against Newcastle, that was pretty incredible. Considering how many players... Newcastle had got off injured and their reshift of formation and positions for players. It was surprising that West Ham managed to throw that away at lead. But yeah, there's goals to be, I think, from both of those sides again. Could mm. potentially be end to end. Spurs have a really bad poor defence at times. It's not knowing when their defence is going to be decent or not. And obviously, from that game against Newcastle, West Ham, it's the same uh, situation. So both teams are vulnerable at the back. Moving on to Wednesday's games, Arsenal Luton. You'd expect Arsenal to bounce back and get a comfortable win against Luton, but you never know. Luton are do yeah. do like spring a couple of surprises. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you've got Saka, captaincy option potentially. You've got Erdegaard, good pick. Um, Gabriel looking like another clean sheet possibly there for Arsenal. Uh, yeah. Brentford Brighton. Um, I thought Brighton played quite well against Liverpool today. Had a couple of chances. Welbeck obviously scored early. Um, Brentford again, Tony, a bit frustrating as an owner, but that could be a high-scoring game. Brentford and Brian could be goals both sides. Um, Man City, Villa is a big one. So that's a big game. It's one of Man City's tougher games left when you look at their fixture run. You know, we hope Watkins is fine for that fixture. We don't know yet, but that should be a good game. Um, you still expect Man City to win because it's at home. But you never know. What do you reckon for that game? Do you think Aston Villa can give them a tough game or do you think Man City will win? Well, the way they played today, I'm hoping they can give uh, them a tough win because they need it for the title race. That's a must-win, I think, against Aston Villa. And if they can't win that, then 
I feel like, yeah, the, the title is slipping away from them. But mm. Aston Villa won't. They're obviously fighting for the top four. Aston Villa, yeah. So there's there's a lot of contention between the two for different reasons. So it's not going to be easy, even though it's a home fixture at the Etihad. It can be. I think maybe mm. a stale makes similar to Arsenal, but we have to wait and see. Yeah, I'm expecting City to win it, but yeah, it should yeah. be a good game, even nonetheless. Thursday, we've got another couple of games as well. Um, first up, Liverpool, Sheffield. Again, Liverpool will have seen what Arsenal and City do the day before, so Liverpool will need to win depending on whatever happens. So, I expect Liverpool to win against Sheffield United at home at Anfield. You'd, you'd expect Liverpool to get the job done. Um, so yeah, Darwin, Salah, you know, Van Dijk, if you've got him, could be good. Could could come up um, could I come up on top in that fixture, um, and then finally you got eight fifteen kickoff, um, late kickoff. Uh, Man United at Chelsea is, might be the standout fixture in terms of the bigger teams this this week, and that might be an interesting game to watch. I think because you don't know what you're going to get from Chelsea, you don't know what you're going to get from Man United. So yeah. I think it's going to be a good game to watch. Do you think Man United can turn it around? Their form at the moment is currently not to scratch, but can that Chelsea game potentially change that? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Man United somehow won against Chelsea, because that's what Man United do. Convincingly or unconvincingly? Yeah, it'll probably be an unconvincing win, <laughs> but Man United could definitely win that game. Um, obviously, Man United got Liverpool to come on Sunday as well. Um, so that's interesting. Um, how they do in that game? Do their rest players rotate? I don't think they will because obviously Man United need to win every game to have any hope of getting Champions League football or European football. Um, and then Man United still have to play Arsenal, I believe, come into the season. Let me have a look at Man United's fixtures actually. I'm not. So yeah, look, it's Man United's fixtures. Um, Chelsea next, which ain't going to be easy. Liverpool again, that's not an easy game, even though it's a home game for Man United. After that, though, fixtures aren't too bad. Bournemouth, Sheffield, Burnley, Palace. They don't have a double um, in 34, but they will have a double in 36 or 37. Could be at Arsenal and Newcastle, which isn't an easy double, but it will be two home games uh, for Man United. Uh, I mean, yeah, you probably won't get much on the Arsenal one, but perhaps the Newcastle one, there is some potential mm. for something getting out of that game. But I still time. wouldn't rule out Man United against Arsenal. I just have a feeling Man United doing something in that game. Who knows? Brighton away as well, end of the season. Won't be an easy game. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting end to the season for sure. But in terms of game week 31, yeah, I think the wild card has to be played in regards to my team anyway. That would be for a second. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I wish I still had my wild card because I really want Son in my team and I, I can't afford him at the moment without mm. using the chip. So he's the one that is always killing my rank when you don't own him. Yeah, Son's gonna be interesting. Obviously, Son does blank in 34, so that's another thing to consider because he's not going to have a fixture. So, yeah, I mean, it's just the next couple of games where you can get by without him. Um, would you take a hit to get Isaac in for Watkins? I mean, if Watkins is going to confirm to miss out the game, then possibly, yeah. Isaac rising, Watkins dropping. Yeah, that's another price rise happening today. So that's why I'm going to go early. Um, in that one, Colm, what do you think Pep will do with the Luton game rotation wise? What would the Second, with the two Real Madrid matches either side of the Luton game, Let's have a look. Because yeah, um, Pep, they have man, they have Real Madrid, don't they, Man City? Yeah, sandwiched in between the Luton. So yeah. it's, so it's Real Madrid. So Palace. After Palace, it's Real Madrid, then Luton, then Real Madrid, and then Brighton. Um, I mean, I mean, it's yeah. hard to tell really who. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's hard to tell. I mean, Foden's yeah. one of those players that you'd expect he's playing the Champions League games. They are yeah. lucky it's a home game there, Luton. It's, it's a home fixture, so it's not much travelling to do after the Champions League games. And after that, they've got Brian away. 
I mean, Man City are in a title race as well. So every they may go win every game now. So I, I still think there will be mass rotation. I mean, players like Foden, Doku again, another one. Doku could play in, against Luton and he could start there, and then Foden could get the Champions League game against Real Madrid. It's just so hard to tell. I mean, that's why I'm going without Foden. I think um, in my yeah. team anyway. I'm not going to have any Man City midfielder in, in my yeah. team. It is less of a headache, I think, without those Man City assets in between that particular point where they play Real Madrid and then go back to Premier League. So, yeah. It, yeah. I don't know who really would be nailed for that, apart from, obviously, Haaland. It's hard to tell the rest of the team. And also, if Man City go through, then, and let's say Arsenal go through against Bayern, and then it will be an Arsenal Man City uh, semi final, which would be interesting for the title race as well. Because another semi final between the clubs plus going for the league, I think mean, that'll only be good for Liverpool, I guess. But we'll have to yeah. see. Um, Champions League will take it out of these clubs. Obviously, Liverpool are in Europa League, so not as straining, but it's still going to take something out of them. But it's going to be a fascinating end to the season now, uh, for sure, FPL wise and just normal football, football wise. Yeah, definitely. It's, not, it's never been this close in a, a long time between three teams. So I can't remember. Has anyone know in the chat when we had three teams this neck like this close to by to each other in points? I can't remember. No. I think 13 14, you had three teams going for it, but it wasn't like this this far late no. late into the season. Yeah, it was kind of like the middle of the season or going into the final third, but yeah, not this late on has there been three teams left the running. This heart race, yeah. I mean, you you've sort of changed your mind on it, haven't you? In terms of the race, I still think City um, win it. I mean, yeah. After, after that game, I thought to myself, "You're in the title race. Whether you win or lose that game, that draw is absolutely pointless. Because even if you lose that, that's zero points. But the draw itself is one. You either win it or lose it. And to throw that away and not go for it." And that also Man City game for either side is mm. uh, tonight. That's quite. I think they threw that away uh, both teams and let Liverpool take the advantage at this point in time. I know that's going to yeah. change because it's still a lot of games to play, but I felt like they had to go for it in that one, not play for the draw. Mm. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Um, hold on, just bear with me for a minute. I've got a comment here from Dara. Um, in terms of the ID eight eight seven zero, we'll check your team out right now. Just bear with me for a moment. I've got a bit of time, so yeah, is it eight eight or is it sorry eight eight six zero? Uh, seven zero. Seven zero. Yeah, but yeah, I think because it is Klopp's loss, obviously season at Liverpool. I think to myself now, maybe Liverpool can push it just because mm. it's his last season. And he wants to get the most out of it for Liverpool, so. Yeah, I think for me it is Liverpool for the title winner. Interesting. Yeah, but looking at your team, Dara, um, I think your midfield looks fine. Salasson, Saka, Palmer, Haaland, Darwin, Isaac looks fine up front. You might want to take out Lascelles, possibly, because Lascelles we know is out for the season. However, you've got Gabriel on the bench. He's got Luton, so you could play Gabriel. Gusto, again, depending on how serious he is, but you probably want to make a defender transfer. Um, maybe an eight Nuri. You could roll and play Van Heck. I mean, I can't. Who's Van Heck actually actually got this week? Brighton. Who do Brighton play? Brentford. Oh, Brentford. They play Brentford, I believe. Um, but yeah, maybe Lascelles to another defender. But your team looks pretty well set up. I mean, you just wild carded, it seems. Um, your rank sit. You're sitting 105k. So uh, yeah, I think team looks good. It's a big green arrow for you as well. Fairly big green arrow, 21k. Um, but yeah, I think the team looks fine. It's just the defenders, obviously, Gosto and Lascelles getting injured. Uh, it's a bit unlucky. Yeah, so there's quite a few defender injuries this week. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I was going to have Gosto and Lascelles on my wild card as well, but you know, I'm kind of glad I didn't go now because I would have to take both of them out. I mean, I don't know how serious Gusto's injury is, but I don't think he'll be fit for Man United game. No, he'll probably miss that because of the short turnaround. It's not. It's very unlikely for players are going to be ready for that mm. uh, game at thirty-one. Yep. 
I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's a quick turnaround in terms of deadline. Um, obviously, Tuesday deadline. What time is the deadline? Yeah. Six o'clock, I believe. Oh. Six. Let me check. So it is a six o'clock. Yeah, it's six o'clock deadline on Tuesday. And I unfortunately won't be there uh, on the Tuesday deadline. I've got, because I've got work. So Jordan will be there on Tuesday evening doing the deadline stream. I'm going to be on a wild card, but I'll I'll try to tweet out my team, my wild card draft. Um, we might have to do a we might do a long stream tomorrow. We might do like a transfer tips combined with team selection tomorrow. We'll have yeah. to see. Um, yeah, it might it might have to be a double stream to fit in. Obviously, the short time because we've only got really Monday, and then obviously the deadline's Tuesday. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, we'll probably do one long stream rather than do two separate ones. We'll have to see, guys, how we how we how we how we do it. Um, but if you've got any other questions, guys, drop them in the comments. Let us know how you did as well. How how your game week went? Are you on a green? Are you on a red arrow? Let us know, guys, how you did. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything in regards to our teams. I just wanna, I, I'm gonna as soon as we get off the stream, I'm probably gonna press the wildcard button and and do my transfers because we know there's price rises happening a lot. Yeah. In regards to Isaac, Watkins going down. I think Tony's going down in price as well. So a lot of frustration from the people that own it, I think, from yeah. having that many chances. His expected goal involvement, 0 0.81. It just shows you how much yeah. Tony had in terms of that in that game to not only just get an assist from it. Very underwhelming. Yeah, he should have scored. I don't know that. I think he had the post as well. Yeah, so to this very moment as well. He hasn't scored a goal since Liverpool and gave me 25 still. Since then, nothing. Yeah. Currently third in our mid-league 8K rank. Brilliant. I mean, it's having a really good season so far, they're showing. Um, yeah, in terms of rank, where I don't know where I can go with, with our rank. I mean, I'm hoping I can break into the, the top 100K soon. That's the next aim. Uh, Mr. Jobs, should I sell Foden and Muniz for Sarabia and Darwin for a hit? What do you reckon? I wouldn't sell Muniz because he has really nice fixtures and he's just come off of gold as well. And I feel, I think for Fulham, he's like they're almost their main goal scorer now. So I think I'd keep him for the next four mm. and probably take out Darwin for someone else in your forward line. And Yes, Foden, you could probably sell because um, we said we would play less minutes depending on the rotation of Pep. So, yeah, I'd probably take out Foden by keeping the knees. Fair enough. Well, I think that's it, guys, in terms of the stream. Uh, we won't go on for too much longer. Um, yeah, just a quick recap of game week 30 and how we did. Um, we're back again, I believe. Yeah, tomorrow probably for the team selection slash transfer tips video. So make sure you tune in for that. Make sure you stay subscribed. Make sure you do like the stream, guys. As always, really appreciate your support. If you want to help us out, all we ask for is a is for you to hit the like button, basically. Um, but yeah, that's it from us. Anything else you want to add, Jordan? Uh, just to answer this last comment from Mr. Jobs, because you said you have Harlan Solanke. I would probably take out Solanke. I, I did it uh, this week for Muniz, and even though Solanke did score, uh, Munoz did as well, but I think longer term, I think Munoz will outscore Solanke uh, with the fixtures they both have in between each other. So that's what I'd probably do, Mr. Jobs. Mm -hmm. But yeah, apart from that, that is pretty much it. Obviously, we'll be back uh, in very short period of time because we will be streaming tomorrow uh, for a long one. So until then, take care, guys. Enjoy the rest of your Easter uh, weekend. Yep, take care, guys, and uh, see you tomorrow. Let's <laughs> go.